Welcome to Business Spotlight on Money Radio WPSE. Business Spotlight is heard weekly at this time on 1450 AM and 107.1 FM. Today's guest is Jim Berlin, CEO at Logistics Plus. Jim, thanks so much for joining us. Let's jump right into it. This month, Logistics Plus is entering their 25th year in business. Can you reflect on how it all started over 24 years ago and what it means to you to have come this far? Well, yeah, we're starting our 25th year, and I joke that the, I hope the next 25 go uh, slower than the first 25 went because it kind of flew right by. Um, but I think I've told you before, it started because I had a big mouth and kept getting fired, so I finally decided to start my own company so I couldn't get fired anymore. And started with three people um, from my old trucking company working for GE Transportation as a contractor and just took it from there. <laughs> so it's been a cr- crazy ride. What have been your greatest successes and challenges throughout the years? Now, there's been a lot. Um, I think you know, one of the things that always stood out was the 9-11 response and how we were the first company that bought in some uh, product, and it was 4G, actually, um, after 9-11. Had to move heaven and earth to make that happen, but we did. Um, we went down to Hurricane Katrina and sent a team down there to help get uh, you know, uh, RVs and stuff on site to help people have a place to live. That was kind of heroic stuff. And then actually even recently in the, you know, with this pandemic, I mean, we uh, you know, didn't know how to react, didn't know what to do exactly back in February and March. But we were trying to get uh, PPE for people and realized how hard it was to get it. So we actually went out and procured it. And we've delivered, I think, 10 to 12 million pieces of PPE already all around the world, which wasn't our business. You know, buying uh, face masks was not our thing. But we could get them and we could then deliver them. And so we ended up doing so- another spinoff, basically. And we provided, uh, I think, a million face shields to the state of Pennsylvania and we provided to uh, in Europe to different countries, to different governments. So we just kind of, I, I was real proud of how everyone responded and just, okay, this, this sucks, but let's figure it out and do something to help people out. And uh, it worked for us as well. Events like we are experiencing now, you guys really step up, don't you? Yeah, because the other thing, I mean, normally what we do is we move things. So that's kind of pretty un- unexciting. Uh, even though sometimes they are exciting to actually get something delivered uh, when it's hard, but in in times of crisis, it's how you you know it's how you respond, and I think that separates companies and people. Um, and some people, in this case, in March, some companies you know suck their thumb and hit under the bed, and others said, okay, well this is bad, but let's let's get through it. And we were one of those, and, and it was um, I think it was the right thing to do. There were a lot of companies with a lot of apprehension. Yeah, rightfully so, um, but you know, life throws things at you, and you gotta—I mean, you gotta navigate it. You can't uh, you can't hide forever. So, um, and like here, you know, we have like 130 people in the building, and probably 70 or 80 of us came in every day, and some people felt uh, more comfortable at home, and we said, okay, you know, stay there. And little by little, everyone came back, but we didn't put pressure on people. If they want to work from home, that's fine. Um, but eventually, people saw I was taking safety precautions, and it seemed okay, and. Um, you know, after, after maybe June, everyone's been back. So, and I, I, I laugh because I work from Long Island every summer, so I know remote is not as good as being there, <laughs> from my own experience. Um, because you miss, you know, you think about it, you miss the daily interaction. Um, you know, you miss what goes on in the hallway, the, the, just kind of the chance things that happen. Um, and and if you think about it, like what you've learned in life, I think you learn a lot less from a book than you do from watching how someone carries themselves. So, so Scott might say something to you or deal with the situation. Fred might deal with the situation that I happen to oversee. I'm thinking, man, that's, that's how you deal with that. You know? So if you're home, you don't get the, that training and the learning and the, the camaraderie that you get from being together. So I'm happy everyone on their own chose to come back. And we've been together since. It's, I think it's much more effective. Jim, when we discuss LP's greatest successes, it's not just those successes linked to America's biggest and best companies. LP thrives at solutions for all your clientele. Large, medium, and small companies are all equally important to your success. 
which is probably why earlier this month LP was named a 2020 great supply chain partner by Supply Chain Brain. Don't you think? Yeah, never believe your own propaganda uh, is one of my sayings, but it's, it's nice to be rewarded and uh, it's nice to be recognized. And yeah, it's just it's really doing the basics of blocking and tackling every day and treating people right, doing the right thing, and it doesn't always work out, but when it doesn't, you own up to it and you don't dodge responsibility, you fix it. Um, and I think that mentality more than anything else and hiring people that, that buy into that mentality because a lot of companies you can call and if it's five minutes to five, they're not picking up the phone. They're, they're already on the way out. And when we hire people here, we tell them, look, it, it, it sucks, but a lot of times things happen at night on the weekends and you can't wait till Monday morning to address it. You got to address it then and there. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine, but probably not the right industry, definitely not, not the right company to be working for. Because time is, you know, time is of the essence with logistics. So it's a willingness to just do whatever it takes to find a solution. At the end of the day, this is one of the greatest strengths of the company, isn't it? Yeah, it is, the people. I mean, I, tell, I say all the time that um, logistics is moving things. Everything in the world moves. It happens at night, and, you know, and no one's thinking about this whole, you know, hundreds of thousands of people doing this every day. And no one gets to do it any faster than anyone else. UPS doesn't get all the lights to turn green or go 80 miles an hour because they're UPS. UPS. Everyone works under the same rules, same laws of physics, and it's all delivering something from here to there. So it's it's the people that put the effort into it and the figure it out um, that makes one better than the other. Everyone has the same opportunity to find a solution, but nine times out of ten companies won't, and, and we do. You have an amazing track record of industry-leading growth in those first 24 years. What will it take for LP to continue to grow now that the bar is set so high? I think keep hiring the right mindset of people. Um, we've been very fortunate. Um, and, you know, the, the old saying, I, I figured you said that Buffett, I think Warren Buffett, about there's opportunity in every crisis. Don't, you know, don't waste a good crisis. Same thing here. I mean, it's, it's terrible that the world's facing this and, you know, uh, I hate to see it happen. I hate living in COVID world. But a lot of people that... Um, might have done something else or gone somewhere else um, or have become available to work for us. So kids are graduating college or, or not even graduated but are working from home now, uh, going to school from home, can come work for us. So we found a lot of good kids, plus the companies that uh, suck their thumb when this happened and let people go. We found a lot of people across the country who are experienced and talented and want to find a company that's as aggressive as they are. So we've hired you know, three or four of those higher-end people from big companies that normally wouldn't look at a company like us but saw us standing tall in this crisis and, and asked, hey, you guys want some somebody good? And we took them. So as long as we keep hiring those kind of experts and then the young kind of guys that want to run through a wall don't know quite which wall to run through but follow our lead on that, uh, we'll be fine. And, and, and honestly, I mean, I've always been proud of our team. Um, but I've never felt better about who we have here now than I do today. It's unbelievable. The, the, the young kids, they, they talk kids don't want to work. I don't see that. I see all kinds of young kids that bust their ass, work really hard, have great attitudes. Um, I've, I've, I've never been more sure of, of us as a successful company as I am today. I can give you an example. We have a big customer that's actually an IT customer. And um, they had a situation, we, we, we do is we configure uh, tablets for them, and the tablets go out to uh, to their customer, and it, it's their work tool. And we sent these tablets out, and about f we, sent, we sent them out every day, a few hundred. And someone made a mistake on the um, on one of the settings for the tablets. So there are twelve thousand tablets out in the world that have a wrong setting. That we did, we did according to what they told us to do, but it was a mistake, and it undoes. It mean, means it's not f fully functional. So we figure, okay, we find this out on a Friday night and figure, okay, Monday, they said, Monday, let's figure out how we're going to get these 12,000 tablets back and fix them, right? Big undertaking. And three of our kids, and I say kids are probably 22 years old, recent graduates from Penn State Barron or something, one of the schools, they, on their own, went down to our warehouse across the street and started to, to program a solution that could work remotely for these tablets. And by Monday morning, 7,000 of the 12,000 have been fixed. So imagine our customer coming to work Monday thinking, oh man, how are we going to deal with this? 
and come in and say, oh my God, these guys figured an answer out, implemented it over the weekend. But these kids worked, I mean, they were, they were down there all weekend. I mean, they, they got pizza, they got beer, and they, they sent me a video of them dancing at midnight because they needed a break. I mean, and, and it's awesome to see that, that kind of initiative. That's what kind of, that's LP from day one. That's my nature. And to see these kids have that same kind of, let's just figure this out, whatever it takes. I, I love that. That's, uh, that's reassuring to me. Jim, can you describe the short-term immediate impact COVID-19 had on Logistics Plus? Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's fear. I mean, it was like uncertainty is always scary. And the uncertainty that comes with a lot of death is <laughs> even more scary. So no one's quite sure what to do. Um, so I it just, you know, we try to be careful and we try to be, uh, you know, understanding of people's fears. Um, I'm a little crazy than most, so like I wasn't that, that afraid of it. But I get everyone's not like that. So if someone was fearful of coming to work, you don't pressure them. You say, okay, work from home, stay connected. Um, but just the not knowing. I mean, just going step by step. And then really the funny thing that happened is I mentioned earlier the PPE procurement we did, which wasn't part of any plan, and we've never done that before. But that project kept a lot of our people working when the other normal business had stopped. So a lot of manufacturing stops, so the normal trucking isn't going on. So you would have to lay people off because you can't have them sitting around doing nothing. But we had these projects where we had to box a million face shields. And everyone in the company, HR, legal, I was driving the tow motor. I mean, like it was, everyone just went side by side and worked for a week straight to get a million face shields reboxed for the state of Pennsylvania. And it just wasn't, it wasn't part of any plan, but it just was a time where you wouldn't have anything to do, but hey, come over to the warehouse and let's stuff boxes here, you know? And it was good for the spirit. It was good for everyone having something to do at work so they feel they're getting paid for doing something. And it, it broke down a lot of barriers. Um, you know, I'm one that thinks, you know, if the janitor is the smartest guy in the room, let's do what he says. You know, that's no, never been an issue here. But some people that are newer have kind of, well, I'm a, I got a, this degree, I got that degree, and they're a little, a little better than the guys moving the freight, which I never bought. But on that, on that line, I don't care if you were the corporate attorney, you're stuffing the same box as, you know, the guy next to you. And, and it had the desired effect where people say, okay, I, I kind of get it now. I've had two people come to me and said, I never quite understood your philosophy until that week, and now I get it. And I've seen a difference in them. What do you feel is the long-term projected impact of COVID-19 on you and your customers? Yeah, I don't know. I tend not to think long-term, so I, I don't know. Um, I, th I think the normal, the normal uh, smart things of, you know, being cleaner and careful and social distance, all that, that I'll probably be there for a while. Um, but I, again, I'm not, I mean, we've, we've done a lot of uh, meetings with customers through Zoom, and I've, I've been doing a lot of that. I hate it. I think there's a big difference between being away and on camera and looking someone in the eye and watching their body language and getting the tone of their voice and, what, what, you know, if they're rolling their eyes when someone else is talking. I mean, I think you miss a lot when you're not in the room. So I'm hoping there's not a long-term effect where people are away. I, I like seeing customers. I like them seeing us. I like bringing people to our building. So hopefully that comes back soon, but I, I don't know that it will. And so you got to find ways to keep, keep connected even though you're not uh, able to get together. Does the COVID-19 challenge make your success this year that much more gratifying because it has been such a big challenge? I guess it, I guess it does. I, I, I don't like to give the COVID world any credit. Um, but yeah, I mean, to have, have tough times like this and come through them as strong as we have is very gratifying. Jim, by definition, we are in a recession. Why is this recession so different than the 2008 recession for Logistics Plus? 2008 and 2009 was the only year, I tell people we've been profitable every year for 24 years, and we've grown every year but, but that year. And, but even our net profit that year was the best percentage ever because we, because we had to let people go. We had to cut back. We had to watch every penny. So when you do that, it, it makes your net profit margin go up, which I hated. I'd rather make less net profit margin and have more people and have more fun. I didn't like that kind of way of running a company. And that, I thought that it would be the same here, only... 10 times worse, but I think the changing factor was the PPE. The fact that we were able to, we, we, for like April and May, that business carried us. You know, getting 10 or 12 million pieces of PPE, buying them, selling them, delivering them, kept all of us busy. So that kind of filled in a gap. And then now everything else seems to be coming back. So 
Um, that's co- coming down a little bit, although still we're still doing that and plan to do that for long term. It's a whole new division we have of LP Med, um, and we did a great job. We had the one of the big shots in Pennsylvania call us up just like a week ago and said, you know, you were the guys that did the most, uh, you know, most responsive, delivered the fastest. So they left a good taste in your mouth. So it's kind of good to know. Even even though we do something new, but we do it with the same passion for excellence that we do with everything, and it, people recognize that. Isn't that a strength, the way the company operates? Well, the best example of that is uh, a fairly new customer came to visit us back in March or April and um, liked what we were doing in a small 8,000 square foot warehouse across the street. And they said, you guys are good. We're going to give you a lot more. Get ready. And she left. And I'm thinking, get ready. This place is full. It's 8,000 feet, not room to grow. So this is no, no exaggeration. We went out and bought the Erie Times News Building the next day. I mean, we, did, we saw it at 10.30 in the morning. We bid on it at noon. We got a deal at 4. And by 6 o'clock, Gannett out in Minneapolis agreed to it, and we signed the, signed the deal in one day. And moved everything over there, and we're and so I, she she went back to Seattle, and I emailed her, said you got, got to come back tomorrow and see the new warehouse we just we bought for you, <laughs> and that's kind of crazy. And and there's, behind the scenes, there's some reasons why I had the confidence to do that, but that's but you're right. I mean, I was nobody buys a building, and the, the funny side story of that is, uh, um, I asked our CFO who's from Buffalo to negotiate the deal with the broker who was in Syracuse, and she negotiated. And four o'clock said we have a we have a, an agreement, and they have to take it to committee to get it signed. So at four fifteen, I email her and say anything yet? Four thirty, anything yet? Four forty five, anything yet? Five o'clock, anything yet? And she's brand new. So at five o'clock, she calls, she emails Yuri and says, "Why is this idiot emailing me every fifteen minutes? Like they're gonna have a committee, they gotta make a decision, they're gonna do it. What difference does it make whether they do it tonight or tomorrow?" And he tells her, it's a much better story if they do it tonight. <laughs> it's okay, okay. <laughs> but that's, not, that's crazy, but that's our typical kind of style. Jim, back in May, you acquired the Erie Times News Building. How has that acquisition been working out for you? Yeah, oh yeah, great. Great building, yeah, great uh, facility. It's good, good tenants. The Erie Times gets to stay at home. Yeah, it was a win-win all around. LP was recognized with its second straight Inc. 5000 award as one of the fastest growing private companies in America. It's your second straight year and the sixth time since 2007 you have received this recognition. You were ranked number 2086, your second highest ranking ever, and you once again ranked as a top company in your industry for all companies based out of Pennsylvania. Is this one of the awards that means a little more to you and your team, or are they all equally satisfying? Uh, I mean, we get a lot of awards, which is pretty cool, actually. But the main one to me is the one we always get about the great workplace, because that's, that's your own employees saying, I like being here. And that's, uh, to me, the key to success. But all of them are nice. You know, it's nice to get recognized, and I never believe your own propaganda, but it's nice to have a trophy shelf. Jim, in other news, you recently named Yuri as the new chief operations officer. Can you comment on that? Yeah. So Yuri's another success story of local kid done, done good. Um, he came over as a rotary exchange student, uh, 15 years old, for a heart, heart surgery that saved his life. He ends up uh, going to Mercyhurst, one of the few years they had um, boys. So he was in a class with 120 girls and five boys, and he said, I love this country and never wanted to leave. <laughs> um, went to Edinburgh, and then his advisor in Edinburgh was a friend of mine, and she brought him to me and said, this kid's special. You take good care of him. And he's worked, uh, his, actually his first day, so he comes to work, and I always dress like jeans and sneakers and T-shirts. He comes to work in a suit and tie uh, with his degree on the wall and all fresh-faced and stuff, and I put him down in our... We call it a warehouse. It actually was the basement of the train station. Um, and his job was to open up sandals from India and make sure that each box had a left and a right, same size, and the little fake jewels that are in them hadn't fallen out. And he's down there muttering, you know, to himself, like, yeah, I got this degree in, and I'm in this freezing cold warehouse, you know, checking sandals, you know. And I say, hey, man, logistics company, this is what we do in the world. So 
get used to it, you know, and he, okay. And he did that, and he's taken on things ever since and been here 15 years. He's only 35 years old. So his whole working life has been here. And uh, he's, he's an amazing kid. Um, he's great with people. He's smart. He's, he's a, he gets much deeper into the weeds than I do. I'm, I'm a good idea guy and kind of let's go guy, but he gets into the weeds. So he finds things I would normally miss. And he's a natural leader. I mean, like, like a, lot, a lot of people wrote me saying, you know, he's been this for years. I said, I know. I mean, the title was not the key thing. He's been that role for, for several years where people come to him, not, not in their department. He's a different department, but they still come to him for advice because he's such a smart kid and he takes time and he listens. So a wonderful, you know, wonderful development. And I got 100 responses saying, hey, good call. You know, he's the right guy. Stepping up and creating this new division must be particularly satisfying because you were able to directly help and impact so many throughout the world in the midst of a global pandemic. We're getting a lot of um, customers that want that knew we delivered quickly and uh, efficiently. They, they're going to need monthly allotments of products, so we have worked out some warehousing and some contracting to do that for them. So come and here's, a, here's an example of the nimbleness you mentioned earlier. So. Gretchen Seth is one of the original five people. Um, she's a, her dad was a doctor, a cancer doctor in Erie. Um, she's our international vice president of, of, of international operations. But as a doctor's daughter and as an Erieite, she took the lead on this project to help get, you know, help uh, the local colleges and, and universities and, and uh, hospitals get products. She, she felt that. So she, you know, very easily kind of, no, no title change, but still an international vice president, but she's heading up LP Med now because that's something that needed to be done. She was the right person to do it. And this kind of, it just happens very uh, seamlessly. It's not like a big strategy meeting, just kind of, hey, you're the right one for this. And she's, yeah, I am. So let's do it. You know, and she's leading that charge. Your LP Med division also announced a new complimentary PPE consulting service last week to help companies safely open their places of business for employees and customers. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Well, six months ago, we knew nothing about any of this, but having delivered 12 million pieces of PPE and talked to a lot of suppliers and customers, we learned a lot. We have some smart people. So we feel we can bring an expertise and a knowledge of that field to others that don't have that. And uh, just like we do with logistics, I mean, you know, you could hire a person as a traffic manager to run your shipping, but how, they're going to know what one person can know, not what 500 people are going to know. And they could leave easily. This way you have someone that is an expert and brings the expertise to you without you having to take on a, a person who might not be that good or might leave. So we can provide that service to the universities here and to the health field and uh, we've done that and they've kind of asked us to do more of it. So it's uh, really a response to the customer's uh, request. Jim, I understand that LP has a newly expanded air charters team to address some amazing growth within that service. What are air charters used for and how do you utilize them to help your customers? Well, if you think about it, if you, if you charter a plane, it means you have a lot of product to move and you need a whole plane to do it. And, and when we did this, uh, the, the masks and the shields and things, things like that, they had to get there quickly. So a boat's out of the question. And you had a lot of them. So the most efficient way to do that with a lot of them is to get a whole plane, fill it up to the brim, and, and deliver that. Well, there's companies that do that, and there's people who know that. And one of the guys I mentioned earlier that we were able to hire uh, six months ago was an expert in, in air charter. He, in fact, we were just in Chicago Thursday, visiting our new warehouse. And our new warehouse is 180,000 square feet next to O'Hare Airport. And at O'Hare Airport, we're at the, at the freight center, and there's this old Russian plane sitting on the tarmac. And we take a picture of it and send it to Russell down in uh, Houston. He knows everything. I mean, he knows the name of the plane, the age of the plane, the make of the plane, where it's been, I mean, it's just his field, you know. So getting someone like that, what a difference it is. And then we've got good relationships with Delta Airlines. We know the CEO of Delta, Ed Bastion. And when we first had to bring stuff in from China, you know, no, no uh, passengers are flying at all. So Delta had planes that were free that were passenger planes. But instead of having people, they would use the belly of the plane to put cargo on. So they were really responsive. And so really quickly we were able to get millions of masks over from China into Detroit 
truck them near you and deliver them to all the local facilities. So it's just that's you know something that goes on all the time, not very much. This made it more necessary, and we were able to acquire some expertise in that field. Jim, this has been awesome. We have so much respect for Logistics Plus as a company. Are there any closing thoughts or final words as Logistics Plus closes out the last four months of 2020? Uh, no, nah, just just uh, I don't like COVID. We're all now uh, hoping in soon. It's a uh, it's a tough, scary thing, and um, we've traveled a lot, and and it seems like it's getting better to me. It seems like I was down in New York for a month, and things are very tame down there. So hopefully we figure this out. Hopefully people stay safe, and this ends sooner than later. Thanks for listening to Business Spotlight on Money Radio WPSE. Join us again next week as UPMC Hammond is in the Business Spotlight.